Welcome to Body Work. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Body Work Boxing. It feels so good to be back. <laughs> Let me get right into this video. The other night, Thursday night, speaking on a Monday, Shakur Stevenson took on Edwin De La Santos, La Granada, The Grenade. And he's facing a lot of criticism for his recent performance. Why? Because they set a <laughs> set a record for punches landed, and you know the persona or what Shakur embodies as a boxer wasn't displayed that night. You know, uh, word is he has some ailments. You know what I'm saying? I think that. Uh, in this whole ordeal, I think De La Santos, I mean, I think he kind of got the bad end of the stick on this one. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can't say that De La Santos was one of my guys because it was, it was not a lot known about him. But I had been following him for about a year. You know what I'm saying? Over a little over a year. You know what I'm saying? Years some change. He came on the scene, made a heavy statement, and I... He caught my eyeball, so, you know, he, he started becoming one of my guys, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of hard when it's a barrier and, you know, you can't really get in to see what's really going on with some of these bosses. But I thought the dude had a lot of potential, man. Definitely um, somebody that put eyeballs on screens, but he's getting lumped in as not being able to cut the ring off and this and this and that and... We can draw other comparisons where the big bright lights got too big and too bright for one of our young up and coming phenoms. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't able to cut the ring off and he got all the praises. But the guy who he wasn't able to cut the ring off on got dismissed like, oh, man, that dude ran all, you know, tables have turned on this one. You know what I'm saying? And. Before the fight, Shakur Stevenson said, oh, man, for those who don't, because I said it in my pre-build, you know what I'm saying? I said, for those who think that all Shakur, that Shakur, all he do is run, and you know what I'm saying? I was like, he pretty much been standing right there. He came out and did an interview days later and said, hey, I pretty much stand right there. So, sometimes what you see is not what you get. And <laughs> more importantly in boxing is what you see sometimes ain't what you can hit. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was the case in that fight, man. Nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? We salute Shakur Stevenson for becoming the three-division weight champion. You know what I'm saying? He got his WBC against Edwin De La Santos. You know, um, he's licking his wounds over the performance. People say, hey, was it a win? Was it a loss? Judging criteria, I mean, I had, I had Shakur winning, but, you know, uh, you could make a case that it could have been a draw. You really could have made a case that it was a draw. And that's just being all honest. And, you know, um, like I said, De La Santos is becoming one of my guys. I was starting to watch for him because he's an exciting fighter. He got he got charisma. He got personality. You know, I think he handled himself very well. You know, um, coming in as the underdog. I think he really made a lot of attempts. I think that going through this experience for him is going to pay off big dividends. Because now, you know, and I was and I was saying this earlier in a couple chats, I was like, look, man, now there's film out on Shakur. Now they know, okay, when he want to run, this is what he do. This is his foot placement. This is what he don't like. So it's good and bad for Shakur. It's good that he was able to go ahead and cement himself and get that belt. You know what I'm saying? The one that Devin dropped. It was good that he got that belt, the manner in which he got it. You know what I'm saying? It, it it left a lot for people to criticize. And in this dog eat dog, you know what I'm saying? Where content creators bite other content creators and you know other boxers just all over each other and they say anything on social media and 
you know, they personify something and get in the ring and it's something else. You know what I'm saying? This is just the state of boxing right now. And, you know, uh, my concern is with De La Santo. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I keep asking this question. Did his stock rise or did his stock fail? And people say, oh, he was a hype job. I'm like, yeah, but in a lot of the fights, you know what I'm saying? People say, oh, man, that wasn't effective aggression. But in today's time, the guy who's pushing the action... You know what I'm saying? Because I would say for the majority of the fight, he was the one pushing the action. That accounts for something else. You know, and it's real crazy when, you know, you got the quote-unquote Mexican style and they in the middle and they like, come on, fight me. You know what I'm saying? You know how they get mad and be like, come on. Like, a la Canelo did with Bivol when Bivol was boxing and Canelo got frustrated and was like, come on, like, come come over here to the ropes. And Bivol was like, uh-uh. It's, it's, it kept putting that stick in his face. You know what I'm saying? It's It's... You, it's something when you got one of those kind of fighters in the middle and they're calling for action and, you know what I'm saying, the other guy just, it's, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, you know, just, you know, taking what he can get, getting the points, you know what I'm saying, getting out of there, not necessarily fleeing, you know what I'm saying, not a lot of straight line backing and just, you know what I'm saying, running here and there, not a lot of that, but just boxing, you know what I'm saying, I would say a little more active than what an Iris Landy Lara would get on a typical evening even though he's a superb boxer and i think later on in the game he's graduated into more sitting down he doesn't move around as much but i would say in his heyday a boxer that's a little bit more active i would say laura was for like about 10 10 percent more 10 15 percent more of his offense you know what i'm saying that's the kind of style that's going to beat a puncher you know so i think de los santos was pushing the action i think that um i was one of the first people that said i wanted to rematch I know it was a stinker, you know what I'm saying? But like with the build, I mean, this is, you know, this is something that Floyd would have done. If 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 it was mixed reviews like this, because think about it, when he beat my Donna and he heard enough from the crowd and all this and all that, he said, no, nah, I'm going to run this back. You know what I'm saying? This is totally different than the the, the Tank and Pitbull Cruz because Tank clearly won that fight with one hand and he boxed circles around uh, Isaac P Pitbull Cruz. You know what I'm saying? Universe forbid Tank would have had two of his hands you know what i'm saying he'd have been able to put down the ones and the twos real proper like this is totally different i was one of the people that was saying hey man maybe this fight deserve a rematch why because in the ranking system you know what i'm saying i was looking at the ranking system and um i would say three days ago this had to be leading up into the fight or like right before the fight where they had let's see if i can go through it it had um devin haney as number one Lomachenko number two, Tank Davis number three, Shakur Stevenson number four, uh, William Zapata number five, Pitbull Cruz number six, Cam Bosis, Jermaine Ortiz, Frank Martin, and Zoro Abdulev. That was the rankings as of like about three days ago. I'm not sure if that was like right before the fight, right after the fight, but right around that time, those were the rankings. Now, given the fact that Devin, they might rank him while they might keep him there because he still holds three of the belts. And until they drop him, they have to have him there because he has the majority of the belts. He got three of the stones. You know what I'm saying? Shakur just secured one of them. So his rankings got to go. But I was looking at De La Santos, man. I think he was like number six because the payday had turned it down. People had turned it down. Cambosis had turned it down. Frank Martin had turned it down. And I'm thinking about the fighters that I rock with. So I was concerned about De La Santos. I was concerned about Frank Martin. You know what I'm saying? Maybe even a little bit of Jermaine Ortiz. I'm still trying to feel, figure out and fill out Jermaine Ortiz. I can't say he's one of my guys, guys. But I got my eye on him. And I don't, I'm, I'm still trying to peg who he is and what he really is. So I was looking at these rankings in the aftermath of this decision. The very first thing is, I don't think that the results of this fight got us any closer to get in the Shakur Stevens in the tank fight. The only fight that I want now that Devin Haney's at 140. I call that the irony of life. You know what I'm saying? But hey, what can we do? You know what I'm saying? All we gotta do is put a little message up to the boxing guys. But you know, I, I think that fight, the fight might have took a step back. Shakur also said that his contract's up next year. It's talks that you know, him and Floyd being romancing the stone. You know, who knows? 
a lot of speculation. A lot of people say a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Bob came out and said, who knows if we'll keep him? You know, and people say that to kind of drive up and see what the market value is or whatever because they could let Shakur go over to the zone. I'm sure Eddie, you know, I, I don't know. After that performance, it's a lot to judge. But his hands was tied behind his back fighting on a Thursday. I was trying to be the positive one and say, hey, for boxing fans, it's like, hey, we getting, we getting Supreme Boxing a title shot from some elite fighters on a Thursday night with a fire undercard. That's what I was thinking. How it all unfolded, whole different story. I still salute your call, you know what I'm saying? My only question mark is when those big bright lights come on, does it get too big and too bright? <laughs> Because with Tank, you know what I'm saying, we know that don't happen. We saw it happen with Boots. People say with Boots and, Car and Karan Chuka John, did the lights get too big and too bright? It's sometimes when people get up on that big stage and them big bright lights come on, a la like Roly, even though I think he put up a, a forth a concerted effort. But when it all came down and the rubber met the road, those lights were too big. You know what I'm saying? The best ones don't let the big bright lights phase them. It's like that punt returner at the Super Bowl. He's been running back kickoffs. Oh, yeah, he's back there. He's waiting. And next thing you know, boop, boop. And you're like, oh, it happens. You know, when you got all them eyeballs and all that attention on you, you know what I'm saying? Things change. So my question mark is with Shakur. You know what I'm saying? And I know how he feels about the media. I'm not media. You know what I'm saying? People won't let me get an interview. If you like what i do and you understand that i'm trying to move along in the vein of the pivot podcast that's my standard you know what i'm saying people like doggy diamond those are my standards as far as interviewing how i like to interact and get questions and stuff like that i'm not all about the salaciousness you know what i'm saying i'll let your boy let me get that interview but if if i could get a message off to your i'd be like look man it's just time to show that when them big bright lights come on i live the olympics i live you know this title fight here that the lights don't get too big for you that's the question mark you know what i'm saying yes with that kind of style being that elusive if that's what we want to call it yeah it'd be hard for kind of anybody to beat but in a dog eat dog you know world where you know fans are demanding their pound of flesh you and, and watching fights you know what i'm saying that's not going to crack the box office and for Especially for somebody like tanking his team and the trajectory and the azimuth that he got, even though skill for skill, we should still be wanting that fight. Newsflash, hardcore, we should still be wanting to see Tank versus Shakur, but we can't push that on the suits. The suits was like, man, I don't, don't want to touch it. It's, it's almost like Eddie Hearn when he seen Bud and Bud was free, and Eddie was like, I wouldn't touch that with a ten foot pole because he knows the numbers. It's a different ball game and this is prize fighting and we're talking about the cash cow. So that's my only question mark for Shakur. But looking in those rankings, I'm thinking, oh, okay, cool. It's a new, it's some new fresh blood on the scene. Raymond Moratia. And everybody is saying they're drawing the correlation to how he handled Nakatilia versus how Shakur handled Nakatilia. A lot of comparisons are drawn. I seen and heard a lot of that going on today. You know what I'm saying? So they thinking that this dude more retire is somebody that can act is breathing down Shakur's neck, chomping at the bit. I'm thinking about De La Santos, and I'm like, okay, who should De La Santos fight? What's reasonable? I saw people Cruz got his eyes set on Tank Davis. Is that the fight next? I, I, I mean, that's what the consensus is that it's gonna be a people Cruz and the Tank Davis. We have no confirmation of that. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? As Tank fans, we pretty much in the dark. We don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? We know he's getting his life together. He got some personal things. And I want the best Tank in the ring. So I, I hope that once all that stuff clears from over his head, we get a Tank that's coming in, you know what I'm saying, with a clear mind, able to train and feel free and empowered going into a fight. So I'm, I mean, I'm I'm sorry to say that I'm not in a rush. If he's not out of that stuff that he in, I'm not in a rush to see him get in there with nobody. I know... That the paint, the paychecks, the team, everybody else is like, hey man, let's go ahead and get back to what we've been doing. The fans are like, man, we don't care. It's a lot of people uh, that's calling on Tank each and every day, just wanting and demanding. You know what I'm saying? They they want it right now. You know they want some Tank right now, and they want them to fight who they want. And I'm like, I'm looking at it like, man, 
I'm not jumping on none of this stuff. I'm not getting out in front of none of this stuff. Can't really defend it. I just know that from a suit's perspective right now, the Shakur fight might have took a step back. And I'm just being honest. You know what I'm saying? That and the fact that his contract will be up. We don't know if he's going to re-sign like Bud did. You know what I'm saying? And since this is a what have you done for me lately sport, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are judging him because of Thursday night. So looking at the landscape, the aftermath, I'm like, okay, what's De La Santos' next move? If I was De La Santos, I'd be looking for smoke with, once again, with Pitbull and once again with Frank Martin. Because those are makeable fights. That's the PB side. Where we're going to air the shows, that's still a question mark. That's why I was saying with a lot of demand that people have for Tank and people, all them people on the PBC. It's like, yeah, we got these last couple fights here for the end of the year. We got rumblings of some things early next year. But, like, it's wide open and we're in the dark. We're the fans that's like, here, take my money. We can't run it. You know what I'm saying? We got to pray to the boxing gods that they whisper in the suit's ear so we can get some of these fights. So where do we stand? De La Santos need to be looking for a pit bull since he's with PBC and them. You know, on that side, you know, um, Frank Martin. You know what I'm saying? My biggest concern was Frank Martin because even though I would say, you know, by the letter of the law, what that was that happened with somebody on your team give they John Hancock and then you see it personally and you say you veto it you know what I'm saying it, that is what it is you know what I'm saying like we go into business and your wife signed for me to go ahead and do whatever work I gotta do then you don't know about it and I come through I go get materials I come through to do my work you know what I'm saying and then you're like oh no we didn't do this it's like well we was all set to go that's a pull out my concern with Frank and how vicious and salacious the media is, it'll make it will make somebody like Frank think that he don't got real fans. You got real fans, Frank. We just don't know what the next move is. If I was Frank Martin, I would be looking to go ahead and, and show what I could do up against a De La Santos. Show that I'm not going to run with a De La Santos. Show that I'm superior to a De La Santos. If I was Frank right now, I'd be on the phone like, hey, De La Santos. Edwin, La Granada, let's get it on. If I was the grenade, I'm like, hey, I don't duck no smoke, Frank. Let's get it on. That's just me, though. Both of them should be going out to Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Isaac Pitbull Cruz, if he really want that tank fight to make it even more, if he can go in there and upset the apple cart against either one of them guys, because I don't think Pitbull Cruz can beat either one of them guys. But if he were able to go in there and do something, you know, special to them guys, that would be the uh, best way to get to a tank fight. You know what I'm saying? But I, realistically, I think Shakur is probably going to see somebody like Zapata because it's rumored that Cambosis is going to fight with uh, Loma. I know Shakur was gunning for Loma. And on that side, maybe even a Jermaine Ortiz. Do Jermaine Ortiz still want it? Did that make Jermaine Ortiz even more hungry? Because a lot of people believe that Jermaine Ortiz actually beat Lomachenko, but he also was able to stop um, Jamel Herring, but he got him right after the Shakur. And I think that Shakur fight to Jamel Herring, especially because they were kind of cool and tight. And part of me think that J Jamel Herring didn't really want to fight that man. That's just me. I'm not taking away from what Shakur did, but... With the money situation, how that belt was, you know, all of that stuff. Part of me think that that man really didn't want to fight Shakur. And Jermaine Ortiz got him right after that. And I'm like, man, Jamel, man, you could be calling boxing. You a veteran. You got, you know what I'm saying? You classy. You, you the method of standard, personable guy. You know what I'm saying? Move on because these young boys are coming to take your fruit cocktail. They're going to ask you for your cornbread. So get out while you can, man, because, you know, as a veteran and having that, you know, those situations and then, you know what I'm saying, you get hit in the head for a living. But who am I? Run your career. I just wish the best. So I see Jermaine Ortiz in the mix. William Zapata, I think he's going to probably want to go ahead and fight a Shakur because he's going to think the rumor has it is that since Shakur probably won't see him like a, a, a real threat, Shakur will probably stand in the pocket with him and pick him off like fish in a barrel. 
I know Zapata is a high work rate guy. You know what I'm saying? He's not all that technical, but he does do a lot of body work and he's susceptible to dog work. You know what I'm saying? If you got some dog in, you could take one or two and then you can get yours off. You might be able to stick them, make them a little hesitant and then kind of change the perplexion. Cause I seen Jojo Diaz, if Jojo Diaz would have had a little extra uh, on his, uh, you know, he might've been able to do something, but he really, you know, he really didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? We talking about Jojo Diaz. You know what I'm saying? Um, it is what it is. So I'm looking at the landscape, man. And um, I think this guy more retire since he's from top rank, exciting fighter. He's getting the job done. He's getting knockouts. He's putting the eyeballs on screens. And he is the talk of the town right now. Even though he's not inside of those 10 that I mentioned, he is the talk of the town. So this is the aftermath of what happened at 135. Yes, we did restore some order by getting Shakur Stevens to get one of them belts. You know what I'm saying? We're pretty sure that Tank Davis being in the WBA is probably going to get elevated for that other belt. So we got two other belts that we're looking at. The IBF and the, what is it? It'll be the WBO. Those will be up for grab. Let me know, man. What should Frank do? I think that's what Frank should do. You know what I'm saying, Frank? You really didn't lose no stock. I think you missed out on the opportunity, especially seeing how that fight went. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you being matched and developed and the different styles. Maybe you could have been able to do a little bit more with Shakur. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the knock with De La Santos that maybe he could have cut the ring off a little bit better. Maybe Frank could have cut the ring off a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? But with it being on top rank and it not being for a title, you know, I'm not sure what the money would be like and all that, but this is the aftermath of the Shakur and De La Santos. I don't think that De La Santos should have taken a step back because really that's really an all in how you judge that fight. Yes, I agree that Shakur Stevenson should have got the nod. I'll go over my scorecard one day. Um, I have it written down. I'll just post it up in the community section. So if you're a subscriber to the channel, check in in my community section, man. I'm gonna start exposing some people, the people biting my content verbatim. I'm talking about people that got 330,000, you know what I'm saying, views. I mean, we're talking about websites that got 1.52 members. I'm talking about verbatim. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start putting some stuff in the community tab to keep my community abreast. Because even though we're a small channel that build brick by brick, that by brick, that don't mean that we won't be getting bit and bit and bit. You know what I'm talking about? Anyways, man, I thank everybody who rock with your boy, man, who come through and comment and give feedback. You know what I'm saying? This is the alternative to opinion-based content. This is true and fact-based content. So like the videos, comment under the videos, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure you update your notifications. And I'll just let you know. Sometimes I take a break, man. Because I'm a fan just like everybody else. And I need a break. A press, Because this is a niche market. It's a brutal market. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, people will pilfer from your ideas. They'll steal from you. They'll take from you. You know, uh, you really can't get no interviews. You know, but it's just a dogmatic love for the sport. to keep you going and wanting to keep other people abreast. Because it's a lot of people that'll play on your mind as a casual. With the knowledge that you don't have this is not a channel like that i'll try to keep you abreast and i'll try to run down and be real specific about what i know you know what i'm saying so we heard about the rankings that was of three days ago i don't know where de la santos is going to go i know jermaine ortiz moved up in the rankings a little bit and who else moved up in the rankings um that was the most notable one and i think he's the most valuable one because he has shared the ring with Herring and Loma. So I'll be looking for one of them fights or Zapata. He's been pretty quiet, but then we've seen links with Frank and Zapata talking, even though that's cross-promotional. Who knows? Chime in on the videos. Um, I always try to put a playlist at the end of my end screen, or I'll put a, vi a, vi a video back there that may not be that popular. But I think that has a message that you need to know. So make sure at the end you look at the end screen and figure out what I got going on. Thanks for tuning in here with Body Work Boxing. Where we don't take things for face value. We do that body work.
Welcome to 